In this segment, we're going to talk about techniques for handling rare words and uh, kind of breaking up things into smaller pieces for the purpose of sequence to sequence modeling. So, words, although they're kind of linguistically well motivated, they're sometimes a fun, uh, kind of difficult unit to work with. Um, We've talked about how there are, you can kind of hack in stuff to do copying of words that you haven't seen before from the input into the output. Uh, but you always have to struggle with this idea of how big is your word vocabulary. And then if it's too small, you need to do a lot of copying, and that's hard to implement. Um, and if it's too large, then things get really slow because you always have this soft max or you're placing distributions over the whole set of words. So one solution that people explored kind of briefly, this was big in about 2016, 2017, was character level modeling. So why not just kind of produce things at the character level rather than the word level? And the problem is characters are kind of too small a unit. Uh, we're with, uh, we've talked about how LSTMs can't actually remember things for that long a distance. And so now instead of producing eight words, you're producing something like 60 characters. And that's not, uh, you know, that's pretty hard to model. So the compromise solution that the field has largely converged on is to use what's called what are called subword tokens or a subword tokenization scheme. Uh, and these tokens might be whole words, or they might just be parts of words. And so, for example, in this example that we've seen before, the Ecotax Portico and Pont de Bui, um, we have a couple of words here, like Ecotax, where uh, an underscore indicates that uh, it's a unit beginning a word. So, what we've done is we've broken Ecotax into two pieces underscore eco, the beginning, and then tax, which doesn't start with an underscore, so we know that that's continuing the previous, uh, the previous segment. Uh, and then portico and pont de bui also get chunked up in some way here, right? Um, and then there's also a similar chunking on the output side, and the nice thing about this is that we see that uh, eco tax can now be directly mapped into eco tax, and so for the purposes of machine translation, which we'll talk about uh, later, we can do things like transliteration by uh, sort of translating each of these segments, right? And this structure uh, is pretty nice and is a lot easier than trying to handle the whole word ecotax all at once. So one of the techniques that people use for this is called byte pair encoding. What you do is you start with each individual byte or roughly a character as its own symbol, and then you merge uh, adjacent pairs. So basically, you have some kind of vocabulary. You get your bigram statistics from that vocabulary. What are the pairs of characters that are, uh, you know, that are most frequent together? And then you merge some of those most frequent characters. And now your vocab consists of your original characters that you had before, and also super characters, which are now now reflect these merges. Uh, and so when you go through this process you typically use some kind of weighting of your vocabulary to prefer more frequent words. And so what happens is, you know, very common combinations like th will show up first, and then maybe you'll get the, the word the in English, because that word is very common in a large corpus. And so that then becomes a quote-unquote subword unit that can actually just be used as a, as a word in a lot of cases. Um, and so people do a fair number of merges. A lot of times the vocabularies here are, you know, in the thousands or tens of thousands. And what this gives you is actually a lot of common words and then rare words get broken up in these nice ways. So these are two real examples uh, of what a BPE tokenization does. And there were no refueling stations anywhere. Everything gets preserved as a complete word, but refueling gets broken up. Or in the next example, unprincipled gets broken up into three pieces. There's an alternative technique called the word pieces method. Uh, this largely does the same thing, but instead of thinking about just merging pairs that are frequent together, um, it actually thinks about this from the standpoint of language model perplexity. So basically, if we want to explain some corpus of data, how can we find a segmentation or subword tokenization that is the easiest to language model? So there's a library from Google that implements this, uh, and this is how they do their machine translation uh, on Google Translate. The uh, 
you know, you can ask how this might compare to the BPE method. Um, one of my students, Kai Bostrom, has looked into this question, and uh, what we found was that actually BPE does a much worse job at coming up with linguistically plausible segmentations than this Unigram LM method. So even though the BPE method is popular and initially got some traction, uh, the Unigram LM method is much better at producing segmentations that look uh, morphologically and linguistically plausible. For example, in the top right here, tricycles uh, is broken into these very natural units, tri, cycle, s, rather than just some kind of random you know, segmentation that doesn't really correspond to the underlying morphology. And this actually matters when we'll talk later about pre-trained language models like BERT and GPT. These all rely on subword tokenization schemes. And so having the right subword tokenization scheme is then very important because that influences your pre-trained model, which will then influence everything that you do based on that model. Um, there's also been some nice work which looks at ensembling across multiple tokenizations. So having multiple different subword schemes and, and having kind of different models that then uh, work together to do a better job at, at translation or, or whatever. So this kind of shows how we can keep this modeling paradigm that we have that we have built up where we've talked about things in terms of words, um, not have to worry quite as much about copying because now every word can be represented as some sequence of subwords. So we don't have to think about having to copy to introduce new words. And uh, this is going to be a very effective approach for kind of navigating this uh, boundary between word level and character level modeling. That's the end of the segment.